And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault. This is the Tom Chenault Show. I do hope you're having yourself one heck of a beautiful day. I have one heck of a beautiful woman sitting next to me, which is quite odd. And that's her. Hello. How are you, Denise? The odd? Yes. The, which part? The, the, the woman? No, you're not an odd woman. Me, no, I never, have a guest. I never have a guest host. Oh, okay. But today's kind of an intimidating show because we've got two icons in network marketing. Yes. And I'm just absolutely overjoyed to have them, but I'm way, way, way above my pay grade. So I thought I would bring them on and uh, bring Denise with me so I didn't mess it up. And I don't know if you know Laura Harte. She is a great kid. I've known her a long time through thick, thin, thin, bigger excitement. She's just got more personalities, I mean, than Three Faces of Eve. And I don't know if you, did you ever see that movie? Before my time. Oh, yeah, by a long shot. Long time. But anyway, and uh, then Tiffany Malott. What a woman. Accomplished so much. I saw Tiffany Malott own Magic Johnson in a room. Yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and he thought he was going to really, really hold, handle that conversation. And he was completely eaten out of her hand. It was great. She's coming on the back half of the show. Let's get this thing rocking right now. Next week's show is Charlie Sinna. And you're going to, China, Charlie China. And uh, he is an unbelievable guy. He's just written a book, been around a long, long time. Uh, Bob Bodine was supposed to be with him. He just canceled. So we're going to have to get him another day. Maybe we can get Jeff Weisberg. Do you know Jeff Weisberg? I love Jeff. You do? Yeah. I've just been on the phone with him and uh, trying to just kind of teach him the fundamentals of network marketing. Oh, my God. He's been in longer than you. And it's just been very, very <laughs> difficult because he's, he's rather dim. Dim. That is so dim. not true. He's a rather dim man. No, no? you don't no. think so? Okay, good. He's not dim. He's cute as a button. And I hopefully he's watching the intro, but if not, he'll only have to watch for five minutes to hear the insult. <laughs> so, Laura Harte, how are you? I am just peachier than a peach tree. How are you? I am fantastic. You are a great woman. How many kids do you have these days? I have four. Four kids and ent entrepreneurs, all of them, right? That's right. All of them are for sure. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. First of all, yeah, I'll talk. I want to talk about those four kids because I opened up that can of worms. Let's yeah. talk about those kids being entrepreneurs and what that really means, because I believe you've been one heck of a mom because at a young age, you've got them paying their own way, seeing the value of hard work and money. Talk about that before you get rolling. Then I'll flip this thing over to Denise a little bit. Yeah. So in 2017, um, like, we went through just hell and back. I mean, let's just be honest. And um, I heard one of my girls say something about, you know, um, why should we make somebody our only option when they proved us to be optional? And I was like, uh oh, okay, wait a minute. You know, here I am going through all this stuff, you know, divorce and everything, and they are too, but I don't want them to turn into like men haters. And, you know, so at the same time, my niece had attempted suicide. And the girls, you know, because they're around personal development, they're around these events and network marketing and, you know, all this stuff. So like, mom, we just don't understand. Why, why are your kids being like this? You know? And so we decided to dive into it and figure out. So we found out that 3,473 kids attempt suicide in the United States every day. And 32% of those are from entrepreneurial homes. And that bothered me. And I'm like, wait a minute here the adults are, we are all doing personal development. We're the ones that are like going for the stars and yet the kids are the ones comparing themselves to us. So you hear this saying that a family that prays together stays together. Well, I believe that, but I also believe a family that grows together knows together. And so when I, my kids are in the know, they know that with hard work, with discovering who you are and what your gifts are and using them at an early age, age just becomes a number and they can be great now. So that's what they're doing. And it was picked up by a network marketing company recently. And the girls sold their company. They still retain 25% of it. Well, um, probably for more than most people make a year. And it's going global. It's absolutely amazing. It's called Go Kids Pro. And we're so super excited about it because, you know, it's my kids' idea, their dream to be able to reach other kids and help them get into the entrepreneurial space. And so that's what they're doing. They're teaching kids how to become entrepreneurs. And how, how old are they, Laura? Um, they are now 14 and 15, and Addie Bell is 11, and little dude, Jace Michael, is four. He'll be five in July. 
so all of my kids, they always go to my event. They are the ones sitting back there and like either in the sound booth or up in the front taking notes. And um, I make them sit there and now they can tell you about comp plans. They can tell you, you know, more about the products and stuff than most people can. And, and they love it. They thrive in that space. So I'm really excited for them. Well, we're proud of you for doing that. You know, every, if you let it be, every day is take your children to work day. And one of the most brilliant things I ever did in my life was I cut my kids in on a share of the profits from my network marketing check at yeah. a very young age. And I think I gave them like 10% and that was pretty good until it started turning into money and I had to keep lower in their percentages because <laughs> I just wasn't going to let those kids rip me off. But man, <laughs> at the very beginning, it was awesome because, you know, I'd go, you know, I got to go, you know, I'd give my, I don't, my check would be like 500 bucks and I'd split up 50 bucks between the, the three of them. So they'd get $17 a piece. So, I think they're still wondering where that money is. <laughs> then, they had to, then they had to cut their commissions because they were such crazy little parasites. But at the end of the day, it was so fun because those kids, instead of going, oh, daddy, you're on the conference call. They were, you know, they knew they were going to get money. So they'd go, hey, why don't you go get on a conference call? Or why don't you go to that meeting and make us some more dough? So that worked out pretty nicely, don't you think? Yeah, I don't know if that's any part of that story. But. <laughs> You know, that's what I was telling Jeff Weisberg earlier. I, I have a tendency to reinvent history always to make myself the hero. <laughs> and I did that there too. But it no, was a pretty but good story. You know, it, it is. I think that ex what Laura's talking about is, is so true. It's, it's like the important part of being an entrepreneur is who you become in the process. And I think that you're right. I mean, you can be a great parent and be an employee somewhere, or you can be a, a crappy parent and be an entrepreneur, you know, yeah. it's all in how you do it. And, and um, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, I think that we have the ability to show our kids the best life possible. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, you as, as a young mother, my gosh, and you're not, uh, <laughs> You're so beautiful. And, and it's so funny because James called you a millennial and you're like, mm. <laughs> yeah, you're like, a, you might be a millennial and a half. <laughs> so yeah. that's okay. But that's but you've, you know, you've, you've, in a lot of ways, you've grown up in this, in this profession. And yeah, well, I'm third generation. Yeah, that's amazing. So what is it that you would love to, to teach your kids as a woman entrepreneur that maybe you didn't learn growing up? Good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a good question. So growing up, like I said, I'm third of generation network marketer. Um, my grandparents, I remember I was like nine and 10 and I would be going to their meetings at whatever restaurant they were doing at it. I, okay, I only went because I wanted to eat whatever food they were going to have at that restaurant. But I didn't realize I was getting the best training in my life and the things that I thought were like common sense to people. I'm just like, well, why don't you know how to do this? You know, they weren't because I was trained that way and I didn't really realize it. And so whenever I, I had gotten to this bad situation and I was like, God, um, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, a doctor told me that I'm dying. I have lupus and RA and she's like, it's not good. And I'm like, okay. So I was like, well, <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Like I, I can, I can do this. I can do network marketing because you know, I'll, I'll figure it out. And whenever I started, I had never had that mentality of, Oh, it's a pyramid scheme. So thankfully I like that. None of that even phased me. And since being in this atmosphere, like on my own and having my kids around and, and whenever the first time they heard somebody say, Oh, it's one of those What's your mom doing with that pyramid scheme of hers or that, you know, that thing she's doing? And I was so proud to hear my oldest, Haley. She's like, um, my mom's work. She's like, my mom does very well. And for being a single mom, taking care of four kids, we have a really nice house. We don't need anything because we have everything that we need. And, you know, she was going on about it. She's like, but then, you know what? She said, just because her path may be different than your path doesn't mean it's a scam or that it's wrong because she actually helps people. Wow. And wow. I really wanted my kids to have that burning feeling to be in service. And that's what I wanted to teach them out of anything and everything. I mean, I always tease everybody because I tell everybody I got a Prada Patty, a hippie child, a rule follower and Hulk smash. 
And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, so I've got a collaborative thing, but it was Prada Patty that was the one that is just like, no, I'm, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like my mom. And out of anything, that's what really meant the most to me because I wanted them to know that it's not about money. It's not about anything else. It's about helping other people. And that's what they think that I do all the time. And that's what I do. And you believe wholly that you can take any single mom in the same boat that you were in, give them a new pair of glasses and help them generate a new life. Absolutely. hundred percent. I know I can. When we talked it's on the phone, that day, I I got, the reason I wanted you on this show was because there's so many people out there that are in hopeless circumstance yeah. that you are helping. And I love you for that. Thank you. You know, I remember last year, no, 2017, when I was going through all this stuff, my dog died, my husband left, my sister died, my parents had lost everything in a flood, found out my husband had filed bankruptcy, we literally lost everything, so it was me and four kids with no money in a bank account, nothing, and you called me, and, um, sorry, and you called me, and you're like, hey, kid, how's it going? I was like, um, it's not going so good right now, like, I don't know what to do. And you're like, what do you need? Do you need money? How much do you need? Give me your bank. I'll send you money. I'm like, what? No. And was, he's like, yeah. How much money do you need? You tell me what you need and I'll help you. We'll be there for you. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I was just having a pity party at that very moment saying, I can't get out of here because there are mean people out there. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I can't handle one more thing. And I was like, oh, Okay. I know who I am. I can figure this out. And I was like, okay. And that's all I needed was somebody else to be like, Hey, I'll be there for you. I'm like, Oh, we well, gotta take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back right after this. This don't forget. I want to hear the rest of that story. Cause it was about me. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming back right after this. Okay. <laughs> and we're back. Hello, Adrian. It's the commercial. So all now, right. okay. So here's the deal, everybody. You're all saying hi to me, <laughs> but every time I reach over to try to say hi back to you, Denise nails me with a tack right in my leg. No, so she's sir. got a thumbtack and she stabbed me about six times. And I wanted to say hi to all of you. No, no, no. Because I, I love you so you much. No, you weren't. Hi, yes, Laura Dennison. John O'Keefe, we love you. We just got a new dog. Hello, Brian Baum. Nice to see you. Duke Rumley, see you. I love you so much. Maureen James, you know that you are in my heart. John Clark, I'm sorry I yelled at you that day, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna bet the I'm gonna bet the Nuggets. I mean, I'm just going through all this thing. My sports accountant, everybody on here. It's a great day. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Chanel, Adrian. Your little contact <laughs> mapper. What's going on? <laughs> the segues are just incredible. I'm a good talk show host. <laughs> What's up, baby? People Hello. should just stay for this part. Of, if nothing else. This is the best part of the show. Mm -hmm. Nikki Molly. Woo! What's gonna come out of his mouth? Yeah. What's and you up? laughed at me when I started coughing when I have had allergies. Well, I thought it was the vodka. Gosh. Keep going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, hi, Laura. Thanks. Thanks for being on here. It's great to have you. And what a what an amazing story you were just sharing. That just yeah. touches me. And you know, I think what what happened in that moment. And I'd I'd love to. I don't I don't want to take away from what's coming in the next segment. But you know to be able to reach out and connect with people and, and show up that way for somebody in their life. And I, I know that you have done the same for, for so many others in terms of being, you know, actually, you know, living your life into being a, a source, a resource to people and, and somebody that's there to help when, when they're in a time of need, you know, the, the relational foundation of that is is so important and i think you know watching mm -hmm. hearing a story like that that i've never heard before and and that that's something that you know that you guys do on a routine basis you know it, you have to be that kind of person first and foremost but you know it also it's it's really essential to have the kind of tools and the kind of systems to be able to stay in touch with people so that when that kind of thing comes up that you're actually in their life and you're able to show up so yeah I'll talk a little bit about what that you know, what that looks like in your guys' life. Well, you know, my Rolodex is built to serve, not to get. And as a result that it does serve so much, I always get. And the more, I was, Adrian's daughter had a beautiful <laughs> musical. She was the star of the musical last night. And the theme song was about giving more and ultimately getting because you give. And it was, that's, that's how accidentally we lived our life 
uh, we had a homeless person living with us for many years yep. that we, I found him in a King Supers parking lot and brought him home. And he lived with us for a decade almost, even, even when Denise was married to us, because we <laughs> learned a level. <laughs> I think Denise might have. Well, no. <laughs> anyway, horrible. Came home one day. So no, that's a joke. So anyway, that's a bad joke. So anyway, she never. He was like short. So anyway, <laughs> that was awesome. This is truly the worst. I don't even want to give the URL. Contact. Know, this commercial was so bad. I don't. This is contact mapping has rescinded the sponsorship of this commercial <laughs> segment. Contactmapping.com. You want to go there? You're on and your own. Rolodex is your power. And you're giving your power away. You're giving it away to Facebook. You're giving it away to LinkedIn. You're giving it away to Salesforce. You're giving it away to your company. You're giving it away to everybody. And the only thing you really have that is of unbelievable value that no one else has is your circle of influence in your Rolodex. We'll be right back. And we're back. It's Tom Chenault. It's the Tom Chenault Show. I'm with my beautiful wife, Denise. She is such a beautiful woman. How are you, kids? You may not be married at the end of this show. We just I never love know. You. So <laughs> tell me a story. Uh, so we've got Laura. She's talking about her um, life, her that just what a, story. Yeah, what a year. And you know, that it, it's probably due to all that personal development that you've done over the years that got you through that horrible 2017 that you had. And I just can't, you know, one of those things alone would have you know, just buried a lot of people, but I can't believe that you've, you've not only come out the other end, okay, you rose to the occasion and your kids saw that and who you are now is, is nobody in contrast to who you were before. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> so, so Laura, going forward, there are another reason, I want you to, you're standing around women, you're standing around doing the next right thing. Leaving a company and joining a new company is like one of the most difficult Tough. things on the planet. And you went through a couple of changes in your life that have been very, not only that whole year that you had, but then you went into a couple of companies after, after that that have not worked out and you're about to join a new one. And it took great courage to even make that decision for yourself and your family and your core values and everything else. Without naming the name of the company, you walked away from a big check to go do the next right thing. Talk about that a little bit. Um, so the first company that I really built big, uh, I loved it. It was so much fun. And I always told people, I was just like, I love network marketing because you get to meet new best friends from all over the world, right? Well, what happens if the leadership changes and they decide to get greedy and then they don't do the right thing, what do you do? Do you stay? Because, you know, you're making money. Well, what about everybody else? And there was two things my grandpa always told me. He's like, this, don't ever compromise your integrity or your character. He's like, because people will forgive you, but they'll never forget. And they'll always wait and see if you're going to do the same thing. And I remember that time that was going on. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, dude, my team exploded. Like, I freaking brought on Asia. And like, all these things, like, it just went crazy but I can make money anywhere and it wasn't worth it. And I was just like, look, I ain't going to hell for anybody. I'm like, that includes this. <laughs> and so when I left, I was like, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be all right. And then all that stuff in my life happened. I'm like, okay, God, like maybe it's going to be okay. And, you know, I finally had to find a backbone this year and I thought I had one, but instead of feeling like, you know, a company owned me or that, you know, I had to just do what other people told me was the right thing to do instead of following my gut. Your gut will always lead you in the right direction if you listen. And I was looking for a, a place for my international team to go. And I was, I'm telling you, I was, I was almost to the point where I was burnt out, where I hated what I loved and I didn't want to be in that spot, you know? And I was like, I love network marketing. It's like in my blood, like, you know, this is what I'm good at and I thrive and, and it's, it's my tribe. And I was miserable and I found my life again and it happened really quickly. I was, it wasn't really looking for anything at the moment. And these people, they're just, they're like, Hey, we want to know about your kids program. We want to know about this and this and this. 
And it just felt like everything just started falling into alignment. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know if I can do that because, you know, I'm supposed to be over here. Like they don't really talk to me that much. Sometimes I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do fully, you know? And so I just started praying about it. I consulted a few of my mentor friends and stuff. I was like, look, this is a position that I'm in. I don't, I don't know what to do. And they wanted to include my kids. And that was it for me. I was like, okay, that makes sense. Because being a single mom, I want my kids involved in everything that I do. You never know how much time you have. And there was one thing that I don't ever want to give up. And that's the time and experience with my kids. And so if they want to include them and let them have their impact and include that into our, our company and our business and really help us um, expand our mission there, then, you know, that was all the, all the answer that I really needed. And that's what's happened recently. So you followed your integrity, you followed your intuition, you followed your gut, and now you're just going to put the spikes back on, go find yeah. yourself a team, build it and go crazy, right? Yep, I am. I'm so excited. Like, I have my smile back. Like, this is a big deal. <laughs> I always yeah. tell everybody, I'm like, you don't understand. Like, there's a smile and then there's a real smile. And my real smile is, I love what I love again. And it's so much fun because I'm like, who am I going to get to work with this time? Like, who are my team captains? Who is going to come in our circle? And who are we going to get to love on and travel and have fun with? And so this is what I'm excited about. My, my best friend, Sarah, is doing this with me now. And we're already just having fun. And she's like, so what are we going to do? I was like, I'm going to announce it on Tom Chanel's show. I was like, because yeah. Tom, you know, he's like, do what you know you need to do. Okay. He's like, do your research. You know, pay attention. If you feel right in one place and you don't feel right in another, stick with that. And like, you allow yourself to have that permission. And that's well, what I needed to take back was my power. We're coming back right after this with Laura Harte. And then after that, we've got the one and only Tiffany Malott. We'll be right back. And we're back, call Adrian. We gotta do a good commercial. But Laura, <laughs> Laura, you are a little rock star. How do people get a hold of you? Um, you can get a hold of me on Facebook with at okay. Laura A. Hart, or you can, well, you can send me a message on Messenger or something. You know, I have. Wait a, my, wait a second. I, I thought it was Laura Hart as well. You I did too. I've Hart always thought it, and somebody told me it was Harte. So it's Hart. So I always tell everybody it's Hart with an E. Some people say Harte. Some people say Hardy. So I'm like, look, I just say it's Laura Hart because I lead with my heart. It's not so much easier. I've been yeah, confused it's so much all easier. my life. Richard Brooke is the one that told me that it was Harte. <laughs> He, wrote, he sent me a phonetic little piece of paper that ex I, he did that to prank me, Adrian. He did it. Again. <laughs> I have been I Richard Brooke yet one more time. Yeah. Don't you love Weird. him? Yes. You do? Look at your face. I'm not going to say. He's watching you. Oh, he. <laughs> right now. Of course I love him. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. What about you, Adrian? I thought you were going to trap me again somehow. No, no, I wasn't trapping you on the homeless guy. Sorry, I have a little allergies. I had to run out for a second. Hi, so, Adrian. Hi. I got so mad, I really debated not coming back. For oh, that. I could tell that from the bad commercial. You know, <laughs> I, I will give you a contact mapping ad, though, because today we were at breakfast and we're at a restaurant and Tom, oh, says, yeah. Tom says, oh, my gosh, they hired another mean woman. I and did not I, say he that. He did, too. He did. That's because she scowled at me when we walked <laughs> in, but I never said and that. About I anybody. said, I go, she isn't mean. And he goes, he gives me this confused look. <laughs> And I said, hey. Well, she came from Shady Acres Nursing Home. She was 100. The waitress. Honey. What? You're practically 70. She's like she's like your age. <laughs> okay, well, okay. She might have been a couple years younger. But so, so she was um, kind of cute. She, yeah, she was lovely. And I met her right. walking the dog the other more day. I'm because she loved you. And I brought, I, the reason I remembered her was I had taken the time to put the information in my contact mapping app. And just doing that alone was a reminder of who she was. It was already in my it subconscious. It stays in your brain. Yes. Yeah, isn't that interesting? And so, and she came from, this lady came from Florida. She was a dog walker. And, and um, so anyway, she knew dogs. And so she and I had a quick little lovely conversation with Tom going, <laughs> how do you know her? <laughs> So anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, it wasn't exactly because I took the time to get to know her I know before I, making a you were very in, bad judgment. You were, I interviewed her. I interviewed her with my eyes, which is a 
complete Bad. and total terrible character defect yes. that none of my friends on this board, not Jordan Adler, not Richard Brooke, not Jeff Weisberg, none of those guys would, oh my goodness, my little buddy, uh, she's she's here from uh, Ellis Keppel, is, we met her in Amsterdam. Yeah. I love her, unbelievable, awesome. she's on here. <laughs> so all of you guys, I'm telling you, the more you remember about people, the more they love you. And you are only as strong as the remembering of people in your database. And the more you write that down, the more you win, right, Adrian? Yeah, 100% right. And, you know, we, we actually got to see Jordan Adler in Las Vegas. So hi, Jordan. And, you know, he sent me the nicest note. He has been following up with me like crazy since we got together. And it, it's just so cool to see somebody who's already a world-class connector like Jordan and such a natural at it that is checking out what we're doing and developing relationships through using the system. And it, it just, it's been really, really fun. So thank you, Jordan, for the, the time that we got together. Thanks for your nice cards that you sent me. That was so cool. And it just, it, it makes it so easy and simple to, to have those little touch points where you're staying connected with somebody over a long period of time. And then when something's going on in their life, they think of you and you're able to be helpful to them. You're able to find a way to do business together. You're able to create all these points of connection just by having those little touch points that keep you in somebody's life throughout every stage of whatever their timing looks like at any point in time. So that's what's really cool. Contactmapping.com. Go check it out. You get a free 30 day trial. And I think you're really going to like it. All right, Laura Harte. Laura Hart. 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 There you go. We love you, kid. And thank you so much. <clears throat> stick around. We'll keep you in the show. And if you want to stick around to the very end of the show, we do a show after the show that's kind of fun, too. And we'll keep you <laughs> tip alive for that, too. So it's fun. Oh, tip a knee. Okay, we're coming back right after this. And we're back. It's the Tom Chenault show. I am so. It's the Tom clearly. and Denise show. It's, no, show. it's clearly the Tom show. No, it's the you know. <laughs> so we have got Laura Hart was really really good. And talk about a gritty kid that is so funny. She does these skits and she's great. And I hope that you will find her on Facebook. She is a little rock star. And our next guest. I don't even want to try to interview her. I don't even want to try to introduce her. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm not hard to intimidate or scare or anything else. This woman is so powerful. She makes me quake in my boots. Oh, quake no. In my boots. Take it oh. away, Denise. Oh, I well. like that. That's I, pretty good words put together. You're, you're red. I love Tiffany Malone. And I just, I remember the very first time that I met Tiffany. And it was on stage at, uh, she was on stage at GoPro. And she did the most unbelievable um, presentation. It was the luggage presentation, <laughs> the baggage. Oh. oh my gosh. And it was so fantastic. And I, because during those times I was really looking at who is it that I resonate with? Who do I want to emulate? Who could be a mentor to me? And you were at the top of the top. And, um, and so I'm just so grateful of who you are for this profession, Tiffany. And you have, uh, you have been through several changes over the last couple of years. What about her little girl? And little, oh my gosh, Cody, I told you this. <laughs> Your daughter, I told you if she's ever missing, you come find me because I've kidnapped that kid because she is so, <laughs> she's incredible. I bribed her. <laughs> You did. Remember, I gave her 20 bucks and that oh, kid yeah. went out of her yeah. mind. It was so awesome. <laughs> right, yes. let's tip, tip, come on, take So, show. Tiffany, <clears throat> I just want to say hello. Thank you for being on. And um, let's talk about this new endeavor that just uh, launched in January, the magazine. Yo, well, thank you guys for having me on. And Tom, thanks for the 20 bucks you gave my daughter. She talked about it and carried it around in her hand the whole party. And because of that, she thought making money was so easy. She actually made another 40 bucks by moving people from the back of the line to take a picture with Eric to the front of the line. Whoa. And they were paying her money. And I said, how are you doing this? She goes, I told them I have connections. And I said, who are your connections? She said, Auntie Marina and Uncle Eric. And they were letting her 
move people to the front. So she came home with all this cash and it oh, all good. started because of you. So thank you so much. Cody is like still counting her money over here. So. <laughs> um, I love so it. So I, um, so my new endeavor after Oh no, she froze. Okay, she froze. Hello? That's okay. Talk about her. That's all right. We're, Am we're... I here? No, we're back. I'm trying to talk. Yeah, I'm yeah. back. Good? You're good. Okay, that's weird. Uh oh. Her bandwidth or ours? Hers? Okay, so as we oh say, so Marianne, figure that out with her. Uh let's talk about her, man. She's just unbelievable. Saw her just completely eat. Magic Johnson Alive. What about her magazine? You, you've been in it already. You're going to be in it again. Yes, yes. So the Direct Sales Diva. And um, yeah, she, so Tiffany saw that there was something lacking in the space. And it was uh, a direct selling magazine that targeted women. And so she sort of had this epiphany over New Year's Eve and st decided to to launch this magazine and oh here she is is she back yep. oh good good i'm here actually you're doing a great job you told me okay, so, 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 tiffany if we if we go pause again we're going to turn your camera off so we you say so you've got more bandwidth and we'll just look at this well, there's a beautiful picture of you behind that so okay. that will help you so if you do start getting that happen again we want to hear what you've got to say Denise okay. was trying to introduce your magazine, but take it from there. So just unbelievable magazine. Let's talk about that. Exactly right. It is, um, I did have an epiphany. I knew I was supposed to do something different. So after re being retired from network marketing for the past two and a half years or so, I decided um, I really just got this spiritual download and it was to honor and feature women in the space. Everyone talks about how women are 76% of the profession, but quite honestly, um, we're only about 20% of the recognition that happens in the space. And so my magazine is a digital magazine that honors and tells the stories of women in the space of direct sales and network marketing. And it is called Direct Sales Diva Magazine. And the May issue is coming out tomorrow. And your lovely wife, Denise, is on the cover in my first ensemble photo shoot. <laughs> And you she's gorgeous, and that. it is, uh, it's amazing. I'm so excited about it, and I uh, think it's our best issue yet. And the goal of the magazine is to elevate women and elevate the conversation around women at a level that it's never been before, because you just said something that I don't agree with, by the way. You said that uh, women constitute 80% of the profession, but they only get 20% of the recognition, and I think they get far less than that. It is completely <laughs> and utterly pathetic the stages are populated by the wrong gender in my opinion in <laughs> the profession and i am thrilled that you're calling it out and doing it because we need to and uh especially in the light of all the stuff going around around the me too movement and finally getting people's eyes open around sexual harassment and all that stuff i am complete i sound i can't even believe it's coming out of my mouth because that's just <laughs> ageism what ageism a ageism whatever it is <laughs> yeah, so i just don't even know i, I, I knew i was going to say stupid at any time. so i'm sitting here going tom what are you doing but at the fact of the matter is that you are right on the money and these young girls like cody all the way through that waitress that waited on us over at uh at the at the restaurant today who i hope she's there tomorrow i hope she lives another day so yeah. <laughs> oh my god it's me up all the time. <laughs> she was younger than me. It's just <laughs> a let, me, let me say this really quickly. Um, my goal is for us to have real conversation in the profession. Um, usually when people get a chance to talk about network marketing, they talk about how much money, what car they're driving, what house they're driving, what their watch looks like. Um, a lot of times women are evil or even um, are either shown as the doting wife that's the supportive role which there's nothing wrong with that but there's a lot of that that's displayed or they're a uh, ball besting by herself and we all know that that constitutes a very small portion of the women that are building and so i also feel like a lot of the conversations are all about recruiting and closing and sales when really there's an entire 
conversation that needs to happen about a lot of the things that Denise said, that you said, and those are the conversation I want to help raise the profession with. Oh, so, and, and that's so too, because that's really, that's like, like Laura was saying, that's what really matters. You know, the conversations that she's having with her kids around service and that it's not about the money. It's about what we're able to do with the money, you know, to be able to give back to our communities and start making a difference. And um, so I think you're right on. It's, it's, it is really needed. So when Richard, I got to, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Richard Brooke just wrote, it's not just a magazine. It is a dynamic broad space spectrum training, coaching, and inspiration community, a place to find your sisterhood with tens of thousands of on-fire women worldwide. I know- Oh my gosh, I just got goosebumps. Can we say that I so too. I can put that on my funnel? Kimmy Brooke right. <laughs> Kimmy, get off of Richard's Facebook page <laughs> and take credit for it. But that was unbelievable. Keep going. It was. Like, can I just say this? Um, I really do have goosebumps. Thank you so much, Richard, Kimmy. Both of you are amazing. And I'm coming after you guys to be contributors and being featured in my magazine. And when I got started in network marketing, I got started in 2000. I was pretty much fresh out of college, had been working a few years in manufacturing. And when I joined network marketing, nobody looked like me. Um, the mentor, my mentorship, my sponsor, my leadership, and I had some of the best mentors in the world. Eric Worre became my mentor in 2001, but I saw very few people that look like me. And I'm not just talking about my color, I'm talking about my gender, I'm talking about my age, I'm talking about my relationship status, everything. And so one of the best things that I learned was you know, stories, you have to tell stories. Well, I started off telling the stories of only men just to become a story so I could inspire other women. And one of the, uh, my goals, my affirmations that I wrote down um, in, the, in July of 2000, the first time I ever wrote down goals and affirmations, it was to become an inspiration to women around the world in this profession. And I have worked for that for about almost 19 years. And this magazine allows me to finally have the global impact and tell those stories. You know, they say facts tell, but stories sell. And if women in this profession could point to a publication to show their naysayers or their dream stealers or their friends that just don't think they can do it and say, this woman can did it, you can do it too. And we can put it out there in a way that doesn't push them away, but attracts more and more of them. I feel I can continue the mission of Erica Marina Worry of raising the profession, the level of professionalism in network marketing and making these, the world see these women as the rock stars and, and, and celebrities that I feel they really are. That's beautiful. That's so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, I remember that the very first um, most powerful women in network marketing that I was asked to speak out, which was year two. And I was so nervous. Um, and I, I didn't know when I was going to be speaking. And I found out after I arrived that I was second to last. And I, thankfully, the person that went right after me was Gloria Mayfield Banks. And as all I could say was, thank you, God, for not having me go after <laughs> Gloria. Because between you and Gloria, you were both such incredible superstars that, um, but it's, it was so inspiring to me to be able to be in your presence and, and to be able to know that that's what I wanted to, to rise to. And I think that's really important. And your magazine is going to change the world. And yeah. <clears throat> I know the other people on the cover, the cross section of female people that you have on that cover yeah. and the different ways they're doing their lives and their business is unbelievable. And, and all mothers. All mothers, incredible stories. Anybody that buys that magazine or goes to the website and sees this magazine is going to realize that they can see their story in it and they can do it too, right? Oh, yeah. I, I agree 100%. I was very excited about the group of women that came together for it. Um, they represent almost every generation. Um, they represent married, single moms. They represent women who are building with their spouses and building alone. It just, and they are brilliant. Their interviews, I just had tears reading the words of wisdom and the nuggets that they shared. And, 
and and going to directsellsdiva.com where you can get the magazine and where you can get the issue um, is a really big deal for me because it's not just a magazine. It is the preview to a private community where these women will also share nuggets along with myself with ongoing training and inspiration and just continue that conversation. So for the first time, women around the world can have a global tribe that they can work together in a very cost prohibitive way and support each other and raise each other up. So that, that's what I'm really happy about. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back right after this. Hold that thought. And we're back. Okay. So I'm going to not say anything ridiculous in this whole thing. We are actually advertising in the direct. We in direct true, sales. Diva. You are proud sponsors. Proud Contact sponsors. Yeah. Talk about that. Hi, Tiffany. It's amazing that hey. I got the floor within 10 seconds of the commercial start. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. And I'm super excited that you guys are our first sponsors, our first advertisers in Direct Sales Diva Magazine. And we just feel like your product is going to definitely help women do what they do best, um, which is connect and follow up and care and love on each other, but do it in a systemized way that helps them maintain their time and increase their, their value that they give to other people. That's awesome. Well, we, we feel really privileged to get to partner with you. And we just got back from the most powerful women where you guys did your photo shoot, which was so cool. And Denise was so, so fired up about it. But I, I was remarking to somebody that I really enjoy that event. And one of the things that crystallized in my head is, you know, God bless them. But at the GoPro Recruiting Mastery, there's always at least two or three speeches that are pretty much like this and nothing else. The whole, like, it's just like all bravado <laughs> and no content. Right, right, right. Yeah. And every time, at every single speech that entire weekend, it was beautifully spoken with story, yeah. but it was like, here's what I did, and here's what you do, and here's how it works, and here's what it looks like. And I was so impressed by that yeah. because I think that's what, you know, especially if you're somebody new that's getting started. I mean, mindset certainly matters, but if you don't have the skills and if you can't learn from these people who have gone and done it before you, it's really hard. And I just, I, I was blown away by all the leaders that were there. And so Tiffany, I'd love to throw it to you and, and just, you know, in that realm of relationship building and follow-up, you know, what are, what are things that you think are the most important for a woman getting started in network marketing to, to learn how to do? Well, I think that's a really, really great question. I think the first thing is they have to be proud of what they're offering and what they're doing. They have to understand their why and why they're doing it so they can help someone else. Unfortunately, women sometimes are embarrassed to be entrepreneurs or starting a non-traditional business to help themselves and help others. And I think the first thing they need to do is fall in love with that. But when women fall in love with something, then they tell everybody. So that's why I feel that's the most important thing is to fall in love with your mission, fall in love with what's going to happen, your future, and fall in love with being able to share it with other people. And then from there, the follow up, the, the sharing, um, the selling, if you will, because sell, sales is just a transference of belief. And we do that all the time. You need to wear anymore. We tell you if your man is no good and you need to drop him and find someone else. As women who love each other, we do not hold our tongue and we should just fall in love with the fact that we get a chance to share it with other people. But instead of being called a gossip, we get a chance to be called entrepreneurs in the greatest profession, I think, in the world. That's awesome. That's, That's great. Awesome. That really, is really so good. right on. Totally. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, thanks for, for letting us join you. And if you're watching now and you want to learn a little bit more about we're, what we're doing, head over to contactmapping.com. You can learn all about it and you can get a free 30-day trial. And thank you, Adrian. We're out of here. Thank you. All right. <laughs> And we're back, it's Tom Chanel, final segment of the show. It is so unbelievably awesome seeing the great Tiffany. And you call, I, I have Malat. How do you say her last name? Malat. Okay, good, now I'm happy. All right. I just don't like mispronouncing things. So she is incredible. And all of you, all of you need to subscribe to her magazine or I'm coming to your house. So ah, I love it. we are gonna post this thing everywhere. We are going to get the word out because these people are changing the world. Richard Brooke, I mean, he's a, you know, he talks a lot, but I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. His comments today have been right on the peg. So if you've got any time at all, go read what he's writing about the Dalai Lama speaking about women. 
about what we need is the women to take over, bring communication back, bring love back, bring peace back, bring harmony back. And it's the women that are going to be able to do that on this planet. I was going to say, if they could just get a word in. (laughs) (laughs) I love you guys. I feel like I feel like I need to go to dinner with you guys and have a bottle of wine. It'll be like one of the highlights of my year. Oh my gosh. Especially if I have one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, no, I do want you to talk about the quality of the magazine though. Because I think that's really important. It's not just, I mean, the first time I saw it, it is so beautifully done. So talk Thank about you. that for a second. Well, we worked really hard to make it a cross between O Magazine and Vogue Magazine. Um, so we didn't want it to be a typical industry magazine, very testosterone driven, very, very male oriented, very uh, blue, gray, brown, and black. We wanted to give it a look that women love. So it's very aesthetically pleasing. We put a lot of time, effort, and money into the photos and from the cover all the way through the magazine. Uh, The other part is what I'm really excited is, even though you like what it looked like, we have a completely new format that we're launching tomorrow. So it's even more readable. It's actually going to fit perfectly into your device. It is, and also what I'm really excited about is the magazine starting tomorrow is free for everyone. You don't have to subscribe. All you have to do is put in, you know, some contact information so we can let you know what we're doing in our community, but the magazine is free. We want it to be an inspirational prospecting tool for everyone in the profession. And then we hope that you see what we're doing in the publication will make people want to join us in the community. So we are really, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I totally believe in what this is and what it can do for everyone. And I want everyone to have, I guess you could say, a free prospecting tool on me. Because I know one thing, when you can show people that network marketers are the complete opposite of what they think they know about us and what they see in the past, that these women are beautiful bosses that are classy and doing their thing, it is it gets super, super exciting. And then the conversations change and you can grow your business and, and change their minds a lot. So, so awesome. James, go get me that book that I gave you earlier. Um, I do. So Tiffany, do you have any, why did time get so serious? I know. I know Cause I just that. thought, I just thought of, I just thought of something I want to show you guys that's okay, I'm excited. That pertains to this conversation. So big time. It's frightening. A guy's trying to get me to help fund a documentary and you're going to hear this in a second. That's going to blow your mind and you're going to love me. Keep going. I don't even know about it. I don't even know about it. That's why I just told James to go get the book. This is half my life as I hear about things, you know, <laughs> the radio show or something. Um, but let me ask you this. Uh, do you have experience as a magazine editor? Or how, you know, how did you fall into this? That's really funny. So I actually was the editor of my high school newspaper and the editor of my high school yearbook, which was an award-winning yearbook, and I'm a journalism minor, and I was the editor of my college newspaper. So I have always written. I have always done layout. I've even done photography. So this goes back to my high school and college years, and it's one of those things that I really wanted to pursue. I wanted to be a print and broadcast journalism major, but um, my parents had four kids going to college back to back to back, So we went where the scholarship was and instead of where we wanted to go. And unfortunately, I only got a partial scholarship to my school of choice, so I had to follow the money. So this has always been in my heart. I've always believed in the power of the written word, the power of press, and today, the power of inspirational as well as informational content. So so this is just in my blood. It's something I've always done since I was 15 years old, and it is just a total and complete blessing that God has allowed me to combine what I love to do as a teenager and in college with what I love to do today. And that is do business, inspire women, train and share the powerful stories that have inspired me and continue to inspire others. That's so great. And <clears throat> we can't find whatever you were looking for. So, <laughs> Guy came in my office yesterday. These guys are Emmy winning award people. And they're writing a book on women in American history because women have been written out of the script over the years. And you can't find women in the history books, period. So these guys have written all these unbelievable short stories about women that aren't actresses or athletes. 
and they've made this great book and they're going to make a movie on it. And they came okay. in here to see if we, they're coming over at noon tomorrow and they're going to help us with some stuff in contact mapping so they can actually figure out a way to fund this movie because women have been ignored forever. And I just am going to tell you that you think I'm lying, but I'm not. It's called Her Story. There it is. Thanks, Adrian. It's called Her Story. And this book, just real quickly, most people have heard about Susan B. Anthony, Harriet Tubman, Margaret Sanger, and Eleanor Roosevelt. But did you know that, uh, oh, who knows what all is, all this basically is saying that all these women you've never heard of need to be heard of. They've been, be, they've been on the forefront of history and making history and network marketing is the same deal. We need to put light on the women of network marketing and Tiffany is doing it. That's why I'm so excited. So it's called Her Story. I'll get you more information about it, you guys, and we'll put it up. But I, I am telling you, you want to follow Tiffany. We love you, Tiffany. Thanks for being on Thank the show. Thank you. Do love not, you, Tiffany. Do not hang up. She's not going anywhere. We're doing the show after the show. No, I know, but I was <laughs> just saying, Could, I was getting it in. Break the <laughs> This is fun. Let's go, man. This is this is great stuff. Sandy Dean Greenberg, an old friend of uh, ours. of ours, just a great guy. He calls himself the connector. And when we told him about contact mapping, he goes, I've been doing that all my life. I'm 10 times better than y'all ever going to be. I invented contact mapping. I invented connecting with people. I invented the internet. And that's this guy. He watched the whole show. And he thinks you were that's, awesome. that's all he could talk about is how eloquent Tiffany Well, I was. do want to remember <laughs> Can I tell you guys a tremendous story about Denise and Sandy and the no, radio? No, it's not. Okay. But no. listen, um, <laughs> talk about, re Tom keeps bringing up the Magic Johnson moment. Oh, yeah. What is that? When you totally school, I mean, he thought that he was going to be teaching you <laughs> and you flipped it and you were so powerful. I was like cheering in the back, you know, going, you go. Went, that was like one of my favorite moments. Thanks. Yeah, um, and that was one of those God things because I was just at the event just to yeah. stay close to the fire. I wasn't speaking for the first time since yeah. 2012. And, you know, it was, it's been part of my calendar for all those years. And I was just happy to be in the room and taking notes. And, you know, I really didn't know he was such a huge entrepreneur and such a smart person. And when he walked yeah. over, it just completely... I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening. But when he started asking me questions, you know, I, I have no problem with speaking, but I, my questions, I didn't really want to ask him anything. I wanted to know if he wanted to ask me something like, you know, could we work together or something like that. Um, but when he threw that at me, it's really funny um, about, you know, give me your pitch. I actually, that pitch I already had. And my philosophy is, you know, be prepared so you don't have to get prepared. And and I tell myself that's what I do every day. Um, so what, what everyone heard and what he didn't think I was prepared for was yeah. not just so much a pitch, it was an affirmation to myself on what I do every day. So I get up and I do it with the best of my ability. And I think that a lot of people don't really know what they're doing every single day. They don't know what their mission is. They don't know what their purpose is. And so what he heard and what he pulled out of me that day was what I had been saying to myself in the bathroom mirror every morning before what I said to myself every night before I went to bed. Because when I have it so ingrained in me and so deep in my core, then not only can I say it when people ask for it on demand, but I can deliver it every time I deal with someone, every time I help someone. And so, so I personally believe that a person shouldn't have a pitch. They should have um, a life mission. And that's what wine was now um, then. And it has changed now with the, with the magazine, but it really is just an extension of yeah. what I was already doing. And I get a chance to do it with a lot more people. And I, you know, I'm so excited. We're actually going to have a Spanish edition of the magazine. It's going to be translated in Spanish. Um, it's, so we're three months old. I started, I started the planning in January, but my first issue came out February 22nd. And so we're not even three months old yet. And we're on our fourth issue. We're about to expand in Spanish. We have advertisers like you guys. We have others coming next month. And um, I'm just so grateful that God chose me uh, to uh, be at the helm of this and to share what I know people need in this profession. And that is a classy, beautiful, professional way um, to honor 
and to highlight what women have been doing for so many years and have been ridiculed and ostracized and made fun of. And I've been one of those women, Denise, I'm sure you've been one of those women. And we have been making money quietly, raising families, starting businesses, leading or organizations, giving to charities, um, and just changing the world quietly. And I'm now ready to help women say it out loud and show everyone what they've been doing That's for two years. Laura, and wait then, a second, Laura's down here now. What do you think of her, Laura? Are you kind of intimidated? You, can you believe you're- No, stop saying that, Tom. <laughs> I'm not intimidating. This is why I'm doing the magazine. So I can oh, show- Magic Johnson, Tom Chanel, how are you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That I agree with you. No wonder you quit the Lakers magic. I'd quit too after she did that to you. Bye. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Laura, what do you think? Oh, it's so oh no, Laura's muted. Is that you, James? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we got you, baby. Okay. So no, I love Tiffany. The very first event that I went to, um, it was when my life was starting to flip upside down. And I didn't know why I was going. I just knew that I had to be there. And so I was like, okay, hey God, whatever it is. It was when she got up and she said, I've been a woman trying to keep a man. I've been a woman without a man. I've been, a and I'm like, okay, I got it. <laughs> I figured out and remember, know why I'm here now. And it's good. I can do this too. If she can do this, I can do this. I have four kids. I don't know what it's like to, you know, have to depend in, and work on myself totally. Cause I'm one of the people who will push you know, everybody else ahead first, but I was like, you yeah. know what? It's okay. Cause I saw her being transparent and I was like, that's what I have to be. I have to be real. I can't do the fake stuff. I can't do the, Oh, I've got a million dollar house. I can't do all that stuff. But all I can do is I can be me and I can be real. And that's why people join people, not companies. That's right. That's right. I agree with you a hundred percent. And I remember seeing you at events and I, you know, kudos to you for your strength because I had no idea you were going what going through what you were going through but I think that's what women do strong women um we go go we grow through it and then we help others grow through it so I can't wait I'm just going to say it right now I'm going to call you or message you since you like messenger um about feature being featured in my magazine because it's those stories that's going to help a lot of other women um grow themselves so they can grow others and change a lot of lives so thank you so much I appreciate that thank you. Absolutely. and I love that you're bold about your faith like to me, that's the most important. So I appreciate that as well. So thank you. Well, I, I'm a serious believer. You know, I tell people I'm a, you know, I'm a proud Jesus freak, but I have a lot of friends who are not. And my biggest thing is I don't really try to push what I believe on anyone right. else. I just believe that if I tell you where my strength comes from, whether your strength comes from the same source, you will go find some, someplace, someone, yeah. something bigger than you that will help you stay strong because especially for those of us doing it by ourselves or or doing it with a man, you need somebody else bigger than you to help you through it all in. And, and that's Absolutely. where my strength comes from. Yeah, you have to know where your strength comes from. I, was, I tell everybody, it's just like, I know, they're like, what makes you successful? It's like, I know where my help comes from. That's right, that's exactly The only right. time I get off track is when I forget and I don't wanna bother them. And I'm like, but when I do, I'm like, all right, I surrender. I'll sing the song, I Surrender All Even, but it does, it turns my life around. So well, let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that I learned over these past few years going through a divorce. Oh, it is now the Laura and Tiffany show. So <laughs> well, no, it's great. No, no, this is, I, that is so funny. I just got a text. Somebody just sent me a text and said, Tom, you have lost all control. And I wrote back, thank God. Keep going. Right, right, right. I'm sorry, but. Um, when you were talking about, I just want to say this really quickly to Laura and to anyone else who felt like they don't want to bother God or whoever you believe in. You know, one thing we have to understand is that something that I learned is that people love people that they get a chance to help. A lot of times we think people, especially as women, we will be appreciated more, um, respected more if we don't have to ask for help, if we're the strong one. But I've learned it's just the opposite. The more people get a chance to help someone, the more they love you. It's the reason why Tom spoke so highly of you when you were going through it, he wanted to be there for you and his being able to give you that gift, that blessing that was his to share with you yeah. made him believe like I believe. Dang it. Gift to us. When you get a chance to give, he loves you more. He has given everything to us and for us. 
And what you have to understand is that that's why he loves you so much. So when you run from him because of guilt or fear mm -hmm. or shame, or you think you don't want to bother him, that hurts his heart because he's given all he can give to show you that he's there for you all the time. And so these past few years for me, um, I realized it was time for me to let go of my ego and my pride of being, you know, a millionaire and living on a, you know, big house on the hill and all that. I really hate her internet connection right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, this is such powerful stuff. I hate to end the show, oh, but you guys <laughs> are the greatest and you're both welcome back anytime. Yeah. The a and uh, coming up at the end of the month. You got to get over to the a &MP. We will sell some magazines there for sure. Little Laura, you will be the highlight of the show. Your coming out party will be then. <laughs> we are going to elevate women in this profession, come heck or high water. I can am, I, and here's what, I, wait, 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 wait. no, no, this is too. more importantly. This is the most, why did you know you loved me when you first came to my house? What magazines were on it 20 years ago? This is a total setup because he must have spied. No. But on his coffee table was O Magazine. No, sir, it didn't Martha exist then. Stewart. Martha Stewart. Oh, Martha Stewart. And W. And W. And something else. No, I'm just touchy feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I'm giving you, if you just be quiet for one second, I will give you a really nice compliment. Okay, good. Do you remember what it was? So, Yes, I do. What I was going to say, though, is that having a person in your life who is not intimidated by raising you up and allowing you to express yourself and to to be to step into your power takes a really special man. And I have that's who you have been for me. And awesome. you before I had confidence in myself, you kept, you kept that platform available for me. And I think that it's just the partnership that we've had through 20 years has allowed me to become who I've always thought that I could be. I'll never forget the day that the envelope came from GoPro. The email. The email. And I, we open it up and the email, it's from Eric and Marina. It's this beautiful letter and it goes, after doing so much service to the industry and I'm just sitting here getting puffed up because I'm such an unbelievable human being and I'm reading <laughs> through it and I realize it was to Denise and they wanted her to speak <laughs> GoPro and not me. And I had been killing myself for 20 years and <laughs> got invited before me to go on to go pro. That was terrible. Oh, that happened. Oh, Just that's like that. it, was awesome. it was horrible. It was because the good thing is it was not, it's it good was... that it happened because you were having a hard time fitting through the doorways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Well, I thought she was alluding to my weight. No. All right. <laughs> You guys, thank you. So I know you would thought that this was an hour show, but you've been so good. The, Linda Evan, that you guys know her down in from Aust from the Gold Coast in Australia. She's a beast network marketer, million dollar earner. She's on here. So many, many great people so watching this show. People. Louis Arias is on here. He's speaking at GoPro. Jay Archer's on here. I'm just rolling through the people. Uh, Frazier Brooks is on here. Oh, I, I mean, love Fraser. Watching this crazy show would just blow your mind. You'd think they had a life. Get back to work, <laughs> you guys. You don't want to be watching this. We don't even do anything. Maybe they're watching it like you watch golf. Just yeah. to, to take it out. Yeah, it's, it's a nap show. <laughs> so you guys, thank you so much yeah. for coming on. Thank you. We'll see you love next you time. Thank you. Next week will be great to us. It'll be men, though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.